Greetings, this is Mr. Case and this is 3.3. We're now looking at seafaring traders extending their boundaries. Now, where's the sea? Well, we're looking at the Mediterranean Sea. And right smack dab in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea is going to be an island called Crete. So we're going to be looking at the Minoan civilization. Why do we care? Well, the Minoan civilization is going to influence the Greek civilization. They're from the island of Crete in the Mediterranean. And it's right where the Aegean Sea comes in contact with the Mediterranean. It was a stepping stone for cultural exchange through trade. Um, since they lived on an island, the Minoans had to have boats, and um, they're going to later on influence the Greek civilization. Now notice where, uh, when they start, from about 2000 BC to 1400 BC. So about 4000 years ago, they were um, a thriving civilization. Okay, on the island of Crete was the capital city of Canossus. Now, this is one big, huge rock, and they're going to build their um, palaces and their government buildings out of stone. So they quarried stone and built uh, the city of Canossus. And it was ruled during the Golden Age of the Minoans by King Minos. Now, the legend had it that in the palace, in the basement, was on a monster by the name of the Minotaur, head of a man, or excuse me, head of a bull, body of a man, and it was kept in a maze called a labyrinth. And anybody that they wanted to get rid of, they just threw into the labyrinth. They never found their way out, and the Minotaur ate them up. Well, I don't know if a Minotaur ever existed, but they did excavate the foundations of the capital, the palace at Canossus and did find a labyrinth. They didn't have defensive walls. There was no need because if you didn't have a boat, you couldn't get to um, the island of Crete. So they had very little need for defensive walls. They did have an advanced form of pottery. Women were equal with men, um, most mostly. And the Minoans had a religion in which they sacrificed bulls and other animals to the gods for good fortune. By about 1200 BC, we don't see the Minoans anymore. They're de declining because a series of earthquakes shook the island, destroyed the palace. It was built a couple times, rebuilt a couple times. Then they finally just got in their boats and they went up north. So that's where you're going to influence the Greeks mostly through trade and then leaving the island since it was so earthquake prone. Another group is the Phoenicians. Now, the Phoenicians are along the present-day um, border of Lebanon, up on the eastern part of the Mediterranean. And about 3,100 years ago is their uh, time frame. The Phoenicians had wealthy city-states. Remember, city-states like a kingdom of Biblios, Tyre, and Sidon. And those cities are still around. They were shipbuilders. They were makers of purple dye, and they produced a paper called papyrus from reeds. Now, to get the purple dye, they had to collect these snails that were in the Mediterranean, and they would extract a fraction of a drop of purple into a cup and throw the critter away. So maybe on a nice hot day along the coast, you'd see these thousands and thousands of these um, snail shells that were rotting in the in the sun. But it made purple dye, and the only ones to be able to afford purple, since it was a kingly color, were the nobles. Now, all along the Mediterranean, the Phoenicians had colonies 30 miles apart. Why? Because they knew they could sail a ship roughly uh, 30 miles in a day, and that made them um, secure that they had a home port wherever they went in the Mediterranean. Their greatest outpost, their greatest colony, was Carthage. And we're going to talk about Carthage when it comes to um, the Roman, the rise of the Roman civilization. They're going to be the enemy of Rome. The Phoenicians were a seagoing people, so they traded goods from other lands. Uh, they had a writing system, so um, they recorded their transactions there. And we're going to take a look at that writing system. And the Greeks are going to adopt this system from the Phoenicians, and we're going to adopt from the Greeks. So that's cultural diffusion for sure. 
Eventually, the Assyrians, Babylonians, and Persians came in and they controlled the Phoenicians. That brought an end to their civilization, but the phonetic style of writing is going to be carried on by the Greeks, and then the Greeks are going to influence uh, Western civilization. So there you have it, folks. 3.3 uh, 3 is almost in the books. I almost uh, stopped too soon. Hang in there. The trade routes along the Mediterranean develop. Monsoon winds are going to uh, allow uh, travel uh, on the Arabian Sea eastward as well as westward, and cultural diffusion is going to spread. Well, here it is. Uh, the Phoenician style of writing is right here. Phonetic alpha, Phoenician alphabet. There's the Greek alphabet from alpha to omega. Some letters you can understand. Alpha, beta, delta, zeta, epsilon, I think, kappa, mu, uh, pi, there's epsilon, tau, Okay, and then there's the Roman alphabet. So you can see some uh, similarities here. Well, this is the end of 3.3, .3 and this is Mr. K's. Is it the end of Mr. K's? Well, stay tuned down the road. We'll see you.